Welcome back to AFTV. Welcome back to another live news show. I'm here with Robbie. It's a Monday and transfers, transfers, transfers. Transfers, transfers, it's, transfers. It's, it's, been, it's been busy today, again. Hey, do you know what, right? I was doing a video earlier with Lee and I was saying to him, I am actually getting excited. Yeah, I bet. It's hard I am to. actually getting... He, he was trying to hold it down and say, oh. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm truly... This is how I've wanted Arsenal for many a year to yeah. operate in the transfer window. Go out there, be aggressive, identify your targets, go after them. This is no guarantee. It's no yeah. guarantee that, you know, that we're going to get Rafinha. There's no guarantee yeah. we're going to get Lissandro Martinez. And that. But go after your targets. Be aggressive in your bidding. Um, know what you want to do. Have a clear plan. And all of those things at the moment I'm seeing from Arsenal, it looks like they've got a clear plan. It's obvious that you're after Rafinha. It's obviously after Lissandra Martinez. They've got Jesus done. You know, so I like, I like how they're flexing at the moment in the transfer window. And, I, I, and what I can say is at last. Um, and good to see. Good to see. Yeah, I agree. I mean, listen, it was this morning. I sort of thought, you know, Mondays, OK, they confirmed Matt Turner. We're going to talk about that. We have another signing. We, mm -hmm. will, we will discuss that in more detail. Um, I was thinking, well, now we know Jesus. We heard over the week, like, the here we go from Romano. We've kind of been hearing that the Jesus thing is done. I thought we actually might have a couple of days of quiet time. Yeah, the Jesus announcement will come at some point. But I thought things might just go a little bit quiet, you know, until Arsenal start making moves again. But again, today it's been busy on the Martinez front and the Rafinha front. Let's start with Lissandro Martinez. Apparently another bid's been made, which is 40 million euros, which is around 34, 35 million pounds. Um, this is apparently Arsenal's second bid, and it's showing intent for a player who, predominantly a centre-back, we, we discussed can play left-back in midfield, but maybe again another position, a bit like Vieira, that I didn't think was necessarily <coughs> a priority for us, and yet Arsenal are willing to splash 30 million on it. So just going right back even to the start of that, what we would normally have done yeah. in other transfer windows is we'd be trying to sell Pablo Mari first, right? So it'd be like, let's move on Pablo Mari, who's our current left-sided exactly. centre-back. He's been out on loan. We've been negotiating, trying to move him on. The other teams that would be trying to buy Pablo Mari would be saying to themselves, well, let's wait it out, you know, and then it would end up happening right down there towards the end of the window and then we'd be left short or we'd be left buying somebody that's not that great. This time, what I like about it is, as you said, they've already made one bid yeah. for Lissandro Martinez. Bid's been knocked back. There was their opening bid. They've got in with another bid now. Now, the reason why they're having to go in with this other bid is that they've got other teams that are interested in Martinez, yeah. namely Man United. Manchester United would like to sign Lissandro Martinez. He played under Eric Ten Hag when he was at um, Ajax last season. He was their player of the season, by the way. Yeah. You know, a lot of people talk about all the other players at Ajax, you know, but, you know, it's Sebastian Haller and Anthony and that. But the player of the season last year was actually um, Lissandro Martinez, right? So Arsenal have identified him. They know that this guy would be great cover, not only in that centre-back position, but also for Kieran Tierney as well. They're going after him and they're going aggressive. And this is the second bid for him. The talk is that Lissandro Martinez is open yep. to a move to Arsenal. It's not, you know, you would have thought he'd be saying, well, no, I want to play for Ten Hag. But he is open to Arsenal. The other thing that's been pleasing as well is that we, we don't have this Champions League football, but we still seem to be attracting these type of players. So, again, that's good. Yeah, I think that's a big thing. By the way, I've got Super Chats coming in. We'll take those in a sec. There's a poll as well going. Almost a 1,000 votes. Would you have Martinez go straight into the starting 11? And the third thing I need to mention, if you hear me breathing heavy, if you're thinking Darth Vader's in the room, <laughs> hay fever's <laughs> absolutely... It's got me. It's, it's absolutely... Not even that, it's not even that hot today. There's no... I've seen no pollen about it. Yeah. Well, maybe it's not a hay fever, in which case I'd be more no, worried for you to see next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, say, uh, you know what? I know quite a few hay fever sufferers. They've been dying over the past week. Yeah. Been and I've been, out, I've been okay. I, I, I don't know. I actually have no idea what it is. All I know is I can't breathe out my right nostril. So if you're talking and you just hear, <sighs> that's just me. <laughs> Just trying to it's catch. It's not good. You got all the Wimbledon coverage to come as well. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's, it couldn't have it couldn't have come at a worse time. Turkish's on holiday. Cecil's don't know where Cecil is. He's going on holiday as well. There we go. So I, I can't afford. I think to he's deal. gone into hiding after the football yesterday. Yeah, well, that might be true. He <laughs> might have gone into hiding after after 
yeah, after the Gold <laughs> Cup. Let's get back onto this. Uh, but that was just my little. If, if, you, if you're thinking, God, is James okay? He's By the way, love that, love that tennis content. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Love that. I, Check I, it out on DR yeah. Sports. Um, you're, you're on tonight, aren't you? We're on tonight, yeah. so yeah, may as well use this opportunity mm. to tell you all about it. Obviously, Wimbledon has started. If you're into your tennis, we're covering it all, and I mean all of it on DR Sports. Quite literally, we've got we've got Pippa coming in who knows her tennis yeah. absolutely. And when I say knows, she's been on the Wimbledon courts in I front know, of I the saw Wimbledon the crowd. She, she knows what she's talking about. You know, she she lives with a pro. She she knows what she's what, what what's going on in that world. And she's going to be coming in tonight. We'll be doing the live show, reacting to all the results, and. Um, yeah, and then I'll, me and Alex will be doing our best to talk tennis. But we watch <laughs> tennis, we're into it. Um, we are watching that no uh, Novak Djokovic game. So, yeah, if yeah. you're into your tennis, come join us on DR. Um, back on the Lissandra Martinez stuff. So, over 1,000 votes now. 66% of people saying that Martinez does go straight into the starting like, 11. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? Um, Just throwing away Quirantini like that? Well, so, so you're seeing him now as... You're interpreting that as starting ahead of Tierney. All right, so what, are you saying he starts ahead of Gabriel? No, 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 I agree with you. I, I, <laughs> I think he would be, I think he'd come in and he'd be pushing Tierney for that left back. That's spot. what I think, that's what I think. Yeah, I don't think he'd be coming in as a centre back. Do you remember, that, remember, um, wasn't so much last year, the year before when Arteta kept playing um, Xhaka. Yes. As left in a free or left back. and that. Yeah. He obviously knows that that's an area of a problem area that sometimes you need some strong covering. Nuno Tavares, as we know, he's not disciplined enough to play in that position. I like Nuno Tavares, but he's yeah. not. So it makes sense. This this is a signing that makes sense. It really does make sense, and it'd be a great signing. Argentinian international, you know, a very highly rated player. You do make a really good point about. Um you know, you mentioned without Champions League football, Jesus is about to get over the line, um, Fabio Vieira, uh, and then the links with Tielemann, uh, Rafinha, um, Lissandra Martin, as we were talking about. There is something, there's an interesting case study there, isn't there? That there was that feeling from me and many other fans, we need to get Champions League football because it's going to allow us to build and get the targets we need. It feels like actually our list of targets might not have been greatly affected. Now, that doesn't make not getting Champions League football okay because Arsenal deserve to be competing with the best in the best competition but it's just interesting that we haven't seen Arsenal move away from the players they wanted yeah no I mean I was truly worried that without Champions League football this was going to be a real issue for us you know getting some of these players in um but Jesus you know I wouldn't have thought he would have gone somewhere without I would Champions never have League football it. yeah but obviously they've convinced him with a project they've obviously said to him listen all right you get us in back into the Champions League. You're going to spearhead this. And I think, as again, I've mentioned this many times, um, James, but I think this helps. It's a World Cup year. And again, with these Brazilian players, with a lot of players, but in particular, these Brazilian players, they love playing for their country at a World Cup. I mean, that is the pinnacle of their career, right? So for them to get into that World Cup squad is vital. Yeah. So for someone like Jesus, where Arteta will be saying to him, listen, you're going to start. You're going to be our number nine. You're our guy. Yeah. Right? That, for him, playing at Arsenal, which no matter what people want to say, is one of the most high-profile football clubs in the world, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. It's a no-brainer. And actually... He, you could go to one of these so-called Champions League teams and be playing a similar role like what you was at Man City. But here you're going to start. So, you know... Well, the World Cup, the World Cup point, because we discussed in great detail on a, on a live show last week, I, I guess you could probably apply that to Lissandra Martinez, and that probably teaches us a lot. Mm. Being Argentinian, you know, there is, there is actually some competition. Romero, obviously, from Spurs is, is going to be one of those positions. You've got Talia Fico at left back. I don't know if Otamendi's still playing. I can't remember. Mm. But they've got a few options. Um, he'll want some reassurances of game time if he comes to Arsenal. So to be open to a move and for this to be progressing means Arsenal have had some encouragement. That also tells us, doesn't it, that he's coming in to be a first-teamer. When you look at the money that's being talked mm. about, that suggests he's going to be coming straight to the starting eleven. Maybe it is to be the starting left-back over team. Maybe, or maybe they're just convinced of the project. Because somebody even like Rafinha, I mean, our best player last season was Saka. He was our player of the year. Rafinha plays in the same position as him. Yeah. So there's no way if they're sitting down and they're talking to Rafinha that they're going to be able to guarantee him that you're going to play each and every week. But 
Maybe they might be able to convince him that, yeah, listen, this is a progressive team. You saw what we did last season. Fifth place with a load of young players. You guys are part of the next step. Yeah. Of, you know, and maybe it's appealing to them. You know, I mean, obviously we haven't got Rafinha yet. So, yeah. yet. So, but, you know, pr convincing Jesus has won multiple titles. Yes. You know, and he's used to playing in, he ain't used to playing in Europa League and things like that. He's used to winning and he's used to playing in the biggest things. Convince a guy like that to come is a big coup. I was chatting to Flex earlier, um, as, as you know, um, from United View, massive United fan, and he was saying, brilliant signing. Yeah. Speaking to a lot of neutral fans, I was at this event um, on Saturday down in Slough, big up to Bigger and those guys who invited me down to that. Everybody I spoke to there, they were saying it was a great signing. I was talking to ex-Chelsea footballer, um, Paul Cannonville. He goes, Jesus, Arsenal. Yeah. Robbie, that's a proper signing. Yeah. So everybody recognises it's a good signing. Yeah. And it's a, it, I just like the direction of travel at the moment. We haven't got a lot of the deals that we're in, some of these ones we're talking about, mm. over the line, but I'm just glad that we are serious about them. Yeah? But, but, but I think what makes for a change is that the, the rumours, and not even rumours, the reports are coming from reliable journalists, it's coming from multiple journalists, whether it be here in the UK or abroad, and they're kind of confirming each other's stories mm. and everything seems to be building on one thing from another you know with Rafinha for example I might be wrong you did transfer daily you know every day back in January when the Vlahovic stuff happened a lot of people are saying well I wonder if Rafinha is similar to Vlahovic and actually it's all to get kind of Barcelona to the table except with Vlahovic I felt like it was being confirmed but no one truly reliable ever came out and said Arsenal have really made a bid and you know, it's really being considered and they've had good reassurances, blah, 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 blah. Whereas now, everything is, he's open to a move. Arsenal, you know, do feel they could get this done. And it, it feels like a different tone in terms mm. of the weight behind it. Yeah, I mean, listen, you know the Vlajevic thing, and I was having this argument with Turkish, as I always do. He's a very easy guy to argue with, right? <laughs> I was having this argument with Turkish the other day, right? And he was saying, oh, look, Vlajevic came out and said that, you know, no bid was made, blah, blah, blah. No bid was probably actually made, but listen, it was concrete. Arsenal were in Vlajevic, right? Yeah. I know he came out and said, well, no one said nothing to him. It, they don't have to say nothing to him. At that time of year, it's the transfer window. You know, Arsenal made an approach to his club, Fiorentina. Fiorentina said, we will sell, right? Um... But at the end of the day, Vlajevic, and it was pretty early on in that window, Vlajevic and his people already said he wants to go to Juventus. Yeah. So what happens with these deals is once a team kind of, you know, realises that they've got no chance, they just pull back. Let's yeah. pull back from it. There's no point in, you know, the guy's saying, I don't, I'm not interested, I want to go. The Rafinha one feels different. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things in play here with this Rafinha deal. Um, Rafinha's preferred destination is Barcelona. It is so obvious. That's where he'd like to go. That's his dream move, right? Yeah. However, Barcelona do not have the funds, and it's not talk, it's facts. You know, you only have to look at the fact that they've not been able to register France, Kessie, or Christensen. These are guys that they haven't even had to pay for. Yeah. They've got on free contracts. La Liga's rules are very strict on, on um, you know, overspending. And, you know, that they have not been able to register those players. Then, I know we're going to go on and talk about this, Usman Dembele, yeah. who had a good season at uh, Barcelona last year, can leave on a free contract. Lots of news coming out today that he's staying at Barcelona. Yeah. Now, if he stays at Barcelona and they're really short of money, where are they going to get money to get Rafinha? Then you look at the other targets. You look at the other teams that might be interested. We heard Tottenham interested in him, but they seem to be going after Richarlison. There's yep. talk today they've they made a bid. Manchester United are going after Anthony. They're not really interested in Rafinha. Raf you know, I don't think Leeds would sell to Man United anyway. There's still that hatred between them. Um, and Chelsea look to be going after Sterling. Mm. And again, we heard news on that today that, you know, they're pushing for Ryan Sterling. Yeah. So the opportunity, the pathway is there for Arsenal that if they can get and sit down um, with Leeds yeah. and come up with a fee, 
they would already have, you know, they don't, they want to avoid another Vlajevic. So they already probably spoken to his representatives and to, you know, maybe not directly to to him himself. Although I, I note that he's very, very good friends with Gabriel. Yeah. They used to room together back in the day. But they would have spoken to his representatives and said, listen, if we can get a deal over, done. Yeah. Is Rafinha interested? They've probably got encouragement and that's why they're pushing for this deal. So it's, it's not done yet, but, yeah. it, you know, they are pushing in the right way and don't discount this. Rafinha could come and, uh, and you know, and if Rafinha comes, you know, I see some people in, in the chat laughing. You know, they were doing the same thing a couple of weeks ago when I was talking about Jesus, they were laughing yeah. then. Yeah. So listen, Arsenal are, are, are stepping in the right direction right now yeah absolutely we're going to talk about that Dembele new contract how that affects Rafinha stuff we've got some super mm. chats I'm going to leave you to the super chats I'm going to run and get a tissue because I'm suffering <laughs> yeah. I don't know alright go this, get a tissue I've bro. never had anything like this go get a tissue I'll leave you to the the super sorry for his hay fever right Benny <laughs> Benny who's our resident US fan Benny I want to meet you right? when I come over to America um, I would love to meet you so hopefully I can catch up with you down there in Florida but Benny says Super Bowl the cup big money spent where next now what he's referring to in case a lot of people don't realize is that yesterday um stan Kroenke's uh hockey team the colorado avalanche they won the stanley cup he won his own cup stan won his cup but they won the stanley cup which is you know the 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 number one prize you can win in ice hockey um so big big deal now he's now won the super bowl and the stanley cup both of them in one year. So all of a sudden, KSC is starting to win things. Could it be Arsenal next? I hope you're right, Benny. I hope it is. Um, Chatiana says, uh, need to get Martinez as soon as possible. Knowing Arsenal and injury records, feeling Tierney won't start the season for us. Have you any updates on his injury? Well, on Tierney, um, he has returned to training. So that's a good sign to see that Kieran Tierney is back in training. Uh, name says uh, most of his career, he played uh, CDM. Um, so he's saying Xhaka replacement. He's on about Lissandro Martinez. I don't know about most of his career, but I've seen that in his career, he's played um, as a CDM for Argentina. Last season, he played as um, almost exclusively as a center back for Ajax. Um, KDKD says we need Martinez more than Rafinha. Yes, Raf is a luxury, but Martinez is a necessity. Um, he can play mid with Partey or Odegaard. Um, again, he can do, but I'm not too sure if that is where he'll be deployed. Uh, Jacob Lewis yeah. says, uh, who do you guys prioritize out of Martinez and Rafinha? Having a similar discussion about this earlier, right, with um, a couple of people who were saying to me, why are we pushing so hard on the Rafinha thing? Martin is more important, but I think, again, you have to look at sometimes some of these things in isolation, right? So, for instance, Rafinha, Arsenal realised got to move quick on this. Yeah, move quick now. And, I don't know, Sterling to Chelsea falls through. Then Chelsea may come and say to Rafinha, well, hey, forget Arsenal, we got Champions League football. Come over to us. Or... Tottenham, you know, Richarlison falls through or they want crazy money and they change their mind and they want... So you've got to move now. You've got to move, you've got to get it on now. Maybe... The Lass but then having said that, Lissandro Martinez is today is a new £35 million pound bid. So it looks like they're moving fast on both. Yeah. Uh, and, and it is competition that drives the speed of these things. The theory is that no one's really in for Tielemann and he's sort of semi-verbally agreed that he would come to Arsenal therefore that's kind of been just tucked away for now mm. um, which would kind of make sense it's all consistent what we're hearing we know that there's competition for Rafinha we also know that we know there's competition for him we also know he wants his future sorted quickly and I think players in the same way fans want deals done and sorted so they can get on with it I think players feel the same way I think players you know Rafinha doesn't want to turn up I don't know when Leeds start pre-season Arsenal I think came back for training today Mm. I don't think Rafinha wants Leeds to rock up same, at Leeds. Sure. Yeah, they don't want to rock. He doesn't want to turn up today. Kind of, well, you know, I don't really know if I'm a part of what we're going to be working on from now. And, you know, I can't, I can't imagine you feel particularly settled. So no. I, I, think, I think it's on the players as well. I, I think they are, I think they're pushing for these to happen, to, uh, to happen quicker. And I think Arsenal are 
trying to capitalise on that, especially while Barcelona are trying to get themselves together. Mm. You know, the De Jong deal with United is taking a little bit of time. Lewandowski they're in for. Yeah, I think you've got to capitalise when these opportunities open. Mm. I think that's what they're trying to do. OK, lay down the law says maybe Martinez would push Xhaka out, not to any. Um, Ali Saman... Ali Salman, uh, micro, um, apologies, says this window has shown that a project and personal relationships matter more than the Champions League. If we can get a CM um, who can get both sides of the game, plus Martinez and Rafinha, the league better watch out. Jeez. Um, Implied says uh, you sleep on Martinez um, as CDM with left back experience. When Tierney pushes forward, Arteta has Xhaka um, move there. Perfect DM for us. That's where he slots in. Um, Mustafa um, Hamza says, if they get their targets, Arsenal gets second behind City. That's what I mean. You know what? It is. uh, I'm not saying we're going to do those things, but it's getting people kind of excited, which is good. Uh, Dave Jordan says, uh, Lissandro for Gabriel. Games like Newcastle happen because of lack of technical security in the build-up. Gabby is good, but causes problems under pressure. Now, don't listen, man. For me, Gabriel starts. Um, simple at the moment for me. Yeah. Uh, Hadi says, uh, do you feel Tielemann's deal is off? Also, do you see Arsenal going for a target man if we don't get Martinez and Rafinha and sell um, all the fringe players? I, I, the Tielemann's thing... Do you know what? Um, make sure you watch our video that we did for the Invincible podcast. That's going to be out tomorrow. We discussed the Tielemann's thing a lot. I don't want to say too much, you know what I mean? But Lee made a great point in that video, right? That with Tielemans, yeah. why rush? Because well, he's got yeah. one year left on his contract. Again, it all depends. We, you see, this is the thing. We don't know what's happening. It could be that Arsenal have just said, you know what? Not really, not that interested in him no more. Yeah. Or it could be that Arsenal have got an agreement. with Because remember, at this time of year, you can talk openly to players and their representatives, right? Yeah. So they may have assurances from Tielemans and they may have given them, saying, listen, we, we want you. Yeah. But we don't want to pay the £35 million on £30 million pounds that Leicester are quoting. So we're going to wait. Yeah. Right? And we're going to wait until later on in the window. Now, Leicester don't want to be stuck with a player that's only got one year left. You know? Which then means... You go into the season, come January, he's got six months left or less. Yeah. And he's worth next to nothing. So it could be a game of jeopardy going on, or it could be just that they're not that interested in him no more. I, yeah. Honestly, I don't know. I'd be, I, I'd be lying if I said I knew. I'd be amazed if they thought, after everything we've heard about Arsenal prioritising Tielemann, if out of nowhere it was... Actually, we don't fancy him anymore because that's be, been. Though, it could be. It, it could, could be, be. But that's been in the works since January, and I don't really know what would have changed. Okay, Fabio Vieira's come in, but he doesn't feel like the same type of player. Okay, Lissandro Martinez can play in midfield, but he doesn't feel like the same type mm. of player. So, I, I struggle to understand what the, what's the trigger for suddenly. Actually, okay, we don't need team. Yeah, anymore. but it could um, be that. It could be just like Leicester turn around and say, right, all right okay, you want team numbers? 35, 30 million. And Arsenal say, well, they could that, wait it uh, out. Arsenal say, you know, <laughs> tell you what, we ain't paying that. Yeah. And we'll just, you, you know, we've, we've cooled careful. on it. And it could be a thing where they just say, if anyone else appears to come in, then we'll come back. But for now, we'll just wait it up. Because, yeah. honestly, if he starts getting down to the end of August and Tielemans is still there, you're going to have very worried Leicester execs saying to themselves, you know, we don't, we, we've done this loads of time at Arsenal. Yeah. And they're going to be like, we don't want to get stuck with Tielemans. Yeah. To, you know the possibility of him walking away next summer, age twenty six for free. Yeah, that's a real prospect. So, but it's it's funny, right? Because it's not a clear path. Anyone could come in last minute. I mean, I didn't really see any links between Tottenham and Basuma, and then suddenly, boom. Yep, deal agreed, and that was one that maybe I don't know. But what nobody asked. directly was in for him yet. Right. There was no talk. What I'm saying with this one with Tielemans, there's been big interest from Arsenal. Yeah. Now, as I said, it could be they could have an agreement with a the player. They could be yeah. just like, just chill out. Yeah. We need it. We want to get you for a better price. Yeah. I don't know. You know. Um, 
Yeah. Let me rattle through this. So many super chats. Thank you. Paul Surin says, shows you Arteta is well respected by players under 26. Edu seems to have learnt from previous mistakes like Willian, etc. I'm impressed. Ex Tapper Matic says, um, Robbie and James, do you guys compare Rafinha player profile similar to Mares? And could he bring the same qualities to Arsenal? Uh, I think he's slightly quicker than Mares, but I think I think they are similar. Mares has an impeccable first touch, probably the best in the league. He's, he's very player. good. Yeah, he's very good one on one. Um He's probably compa more comparable to what Mahrez was like at Leicester. I think Mahrez has slightly changed at City. Um, I don't know. I don't mm. know if that's a fair statement. You guys let me know in the comments. But, yeah, mm. I, I, don't, I don't think comparing them is what... Yeah, they're both... I think, I think uh, you'd have to say Mahrez is ahead. Well, of course. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. What he's yeah. done, he's a great player. But Rafinha's one of those players who can I get I was thinking profile-wise. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, similar. Yeah. AJ says, do you think the players that we have bought in, and if we get Rafinha, Martinez... And Ruiz or Tielemans, should we be competing for the title? The title, ooh, ooh, that's a bit early to be saying that. But certainly, I think if you get those signings in, there's no excuses for top four. Well, it, it's, it's one of those grey areas where I, I don't think we can have a good summer and suddenly just expect ourselves to be on City and Liverpool's uh, level. Because no. even if we really believed the players were there, Mikel Arteta would have to be the manager who could get that over the line. And we're, listen, we've seen good things from Arteta. We've also seen some bad things. We, there's a, he's got a lot to prove before he's discussing and the title-winning manager. And you're going to have the players and there's going to be no excuses. Um, yeah. TB says, uh, thoughts on the centre-back position? For me, it's Gabriel and Saliba. Not for me, it's not. It's Gabriel and Ben White still. Yeah, um, Saliba's going to have to earn his spot. Yeah, he's got to earn it. Jason says to will. me, uh, shout out to Matt Turner, representing from, for New Jersey. With Rafinha, are you worried about him blowing up like when Aileen got sent off last year? No, not at all. And shout out going out to Matt Turner. I know you're going to talk about him in yeah. a minute. Uh, Red Square says, uh, big up guys. I think Tielemans is more important than all of them. Um, to get like a player, to get a light for light player next season, we would have to pay 60 million plus. There are yeah. some alternatives to Tielemans out there that wouldn't cost... The earth, you know, there are a couple of players like Fabian Ruiz that was mentioned earlier. There are, um, you know, Milinkovic, so Milinkovic Savage and, and Savage and players like that. So, you I know. I saw us linked to Seko Fofana. Um, Seko Fofana is a very good player. Is he? I, I know nothing Yeah, about yeah, him. you know, I've watched um, him play a few okay. good players. Yeah. Big handful, handful, box-to-box, rangy player in the midfield. Um, there's uh, Adrian Rabio who looks looking to get out of um, yeah, but would you, would you... I, I don't think I'd want him, but yeah. he's a, you know he'd be a, he'd be available on the cheap. So yeah. there are alternatives. Uh, Seab says, uh, Rob, do you think uh, we're going to spend over 180 million? Possibly. Um, I think Tay we could spend close. Yep. Yeah, Tayseb says, love the content, Rob. Um, really hoping for Rafinha. Jay Mystery says Martinez will be a great signing for us. Shreff says Martinez uh, may have the quality, but worried about the height and the build issue. Didn't we get Torreira? Name three top players in the Premier League with his height playing those roles. That is a great point, Shreff, because he's not even six foot. Yeah, it, like it, he's. I get. I get what he's saying. You know, look at the centre backs across the Premier League. I get it. But firstly, I don't think he'll play centre back for us. I think he'll deputise if absolutely needed. Secondly, Mascherano started centre back for Barcelona. I know playing in La Liga, True. but, but won point. the Champions League. It was unbelievable in that position mm. for many, many Different years. Different league, though. You know, the Premier League. But, but he translated I mean, it to the Champions League. Balls being knocked into the box. Chris Wood. Up I get on that. it. Yeah, I get it. He didn't, he didn't go to Turf Moor on, you know, every yeah. week. But, but generally, I think the rule of thumb is if you've got the ball, it doesn't really matter, does it? I, th okay. I think that's the I think that's the the dream theory, mm. isn't it? And try saying that on a Tuesday night up there at well, Everton. Yeah. Everton with Calvert Lewin bearing down on you. Yeah, Innie says, true. "Great show today. Thoughts on Torreira playing himself back into contention like El Nenny did? Can't see I it. Like, I like I like Torreira. Torreira's. I think Torreira needs to move on. Um, well, well, no. well, when I watch Torreira, he sort of he buzzes around, doesn't he? He's tackling, he's running, he's getting stuck at Kean, he's He's doing a little bit of everything. And I, and I think Arteta likes players who are a little bit more controlled. And I know with Elneny, there's that kind of joke, which he's never less than a five, he's never more than a five. And I know that's not exactly true, but I think 
I think what Arteta likes about El Nenny is there's that safeness about him. He'll stand where he's told to stand, he'll follow instruction, and he'll just do what he's asked to do. Whereas I think Torreira is probably a little bit less trustworthy. Yeah, yeah I think he gets a bit... Time to move Torreira on. Yeah, and no, I mean, it is time. I, I like time, But I think there's a good he's player He's never in settled there. in this country. I think his first season was good. I, I think Torreira is a really funny one because he was our defensive midfielder. He started brilliantly, had a good, um, a good thing going with Granit Xhaka for kind of Emery's first season. And then he starts the second season. He starts playing him as more of a box to box Emery. Yeah, and he, yeah. You know, that's he true. kind of he kind of lost his confidence. He didn't really he didn't look comfortable in that role. And then he kind of gets taken out of the team. Arteta doesn't really know you know what to do with him. And I just don't think he ever found the confidence since. But I think there's yeah. a good player in there. Yeah, I really I, do. I, I heard he had personal issues in that he was very lonely. You know. Okay. Um, Harry Hart says, uh, we need Fafana, a powerhouse in midfield. Um, Irish Jags uh, fan says, um, could Fabio Vieira play Xhaka's role? Not for me. I mean, listen, he could, mm. but I wouldn't want him to. I think it's he excels. He's more a creative player, isn't it? He sells, excels or, or in his creativity wide, and yeah. when he's someone who's slightly more experienced yeah. and defensively aware. Yeah, Chris Ferone says, uh, is this window goes as planned? Oh. Gosh, just miss out. If this window goes to plans, it puts us in a position for future windows to target one or two big transfers that will put us to the top of the league. So a lot of people infused by this. Yeah. Um, Victor Lang says, Stan Kroenke got the Stanley Cup. He can win the Premier League. If he can build a faster and more experienced team, Colorado won yesterday because of speed and experience. Kroenke got a Super Bowl and N NHL in five months yeah uh, undisputed boxing says colo torre wasn't massive but he was great for us yeah, that's yeah. true somebody um also pointed out i saw pointing out alaba as well um yeah, at, another, uh, yeah real another madrid example. is another another great player yeah um paul Sheeran says do you think martin his height is an issue call zola um, was five foot six and was excellent but he wasn't playing in defense was he yeah. uh, martin is would be perfect signing and he can take over at Xhaka's role. Uh, and uh, Josie Dirt says, Robbie and James, look up Martinez aerial dual stats. Well, James, you didn't do that, man. Yeah, you're the yeah, stats yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, Epictetus35 says, Lissandra Martinez is Apparently short. they're good, by the way. Short, huh? Apparently they're good. Okay. I don't know. I, I think I read somewhere. Yeah, he said he's yeah. short but very good in the air. Average yeah. 3.3 aerial duels won per game last season. Definitely will only agree to move as a centre back. Okay. Um, Relax and manifest says, do you think Arsenal are going for a similar um, fullback to Tommy Asu, where he has a he was a centre back previously, uh, can command aerial presence and solid defensively? That's a great shout. Maybe they're looking at it from that point of view. Uh, Manpreet Singh says, um, could Odegaard take Xhaka's role and Vieira move to number ten? Y yes, in theory. Yeah, yeah. I still feel you want a specialist in that position rather than hoping Odegaard can pick it up or hoping Vieira can play it. I think let them do what they do best and get a specialist, which is why I like the look of Tielman, um, yeah. personally. Yeah. Tell um, us about... Um, oh, he was going to give us some stats. Well, no, do you know what I was just doing? I, I, was, I was having a little look at Liverpool's transfer window because of that super chat where they said you know, get the players we need this season and then it sets a nice foundation. And then future windows, it's about sort of one or two that improve us, one or two that improve us here and there. And I was just looking at that Liverpool window um, in 2018 where they brought in Alisson for 56 million, uh, Naby Keita for 54 and Fabinho for 40 and then Jern and Shaqiri for depth as well. And listen, I'm not saying that A, who we sign are going to be as good, nor that we, we're going to springboard the way, you know, Liverpool did off that. And I'm not even saying the signings are going to be as good, but the one thing that it does remind me of is, is that summer Liverpool had where you felt that they were building some nice stuff. Van Dijk had just arrived and you felt that there was the makings of a good team there. And they just sprinkled that balance between experience, quality, but they're still young enough. Their best years were coming ahead and they really kicked on. And I think that's what a club like Arsenal should be taking inspiration from. Um, so yeah, just addressing mm. some of that super chat. Okay, just where you get to, yeah. just where you get to um, the next, so many super chats coming today. Thank wow. you very much. Innocent says, we need someone um, solid um, box to box CM. Uh, are we blind not to see this guy from Lens or Lens for, for um, Fafana? I've seen him, he's very good. Yeah. 
but I've only seen him. I've said I've seen him probably about four or five games. The one game that really stood out for me is when I watched when he played against PSG. I'm telling you, he was, was, he? He, was he was a monster in that game. Okay, well. He was really good. But I don't see him every week. But Lens did have a very, very good season. Yeah. Um, Don says, in Salah, um, you man get Rafinha. He's, and he's, he's, he's a Chelsea fan. He's saying you man won't get Rafinha. Yeah. Oh, you man don't get Rafinha. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was thinking to myself, as his Chelsea fan being so nice to us. Hey, yeah. what do you mean? Listen, for, don't forget, I said it earlier, we're a blessed team now. Right? Got Mohammed and Jesus coming. Right? With those two in combination, we can't lose. <laughs> right? Uh, Kantra Shula says, uh, Robbie and James, do you honestly think we'll get both Rafinha and Tiedemans? I can't say. I've loved that. I'd love that, but I can't say. History would say no, but the way it's being talked about, yeah, maybe both. Mm. That'd be incredible. It'd be but, an incredible window if we got both. But it, 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 it's a case of if you get Rafinha, Tiedemann and Lissandra Martinez, then Arsenal fans, I think, would stop and say, OK, that's, that's more than we thought. That, you know. That'd be an incredible window. Um, yeah. David Jordan says, let's uh, be honest about this poll. I'm not sure what's the result on the poll, but um, let's be honest oh, about the poll. It says, Martinez won't start over KT until he proves himself be to be better than KT or KT is injured. You guys said Saliba needed to earn his place. No different in this case. I agree. I, for me, it, a fit Kieran Tierney starts. I think it is different though, because Tierney hasn't been able to prove he can stay fit for a real prolonged period of time. I know he's been able to do two, three, four months here and whatever, but... He's not been able to go a season. And now you're going to have Europa League games in it. And now we've got Europa League games as well. I think there's a really good chance that... I know we've just heard that he's fit again, Tierney, but he did have a knee, a knee problem. He had knee surgery. You know, you don't want to rush that. I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me at all if... If we got Lissandra Martinez, if he actually did start the season, and Arteta, and let me just go with the guy who played 37 league games last season, played in Europe last season, is an Argentinian international, played the, Arge um, the Argentina games, came into pre-season fully fit and is ready to go for the season. Tierney, we now need to... Yes, he's fit. He might be ready to play some pre-season games, but he's got to get back to match fitness. That could take a while, especially when you've had surgery. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a really good chance that Martinez is back in and Tierney's going to have to earn his place back in this team well, it, it, it really wouldn't surprise me at all ok Shrev says I've got a problem with his stats easy to manipulate the data to point out what's average he says but point out what's the average height in La Liga he goes 5 foot crap try jumping a wall with a 6 foot um, defensive players um, Hector Diaz says thoughts on bail to uh, LAFC um, would you have taken him? No, I think he even bought, he should have. You know, he bottled it from going to Cardiff. He was trying to stay injury free to me by taking the easy route out. I'm sorry, goes to a team that are right at the top of the league over there in America, right? No disrespect to LAFC, but Bale, why didn't you go to Cardiff? So I, I certainly wouldn't have wanted. I think Bale. He's, he's moved to I LA. Think, he's gonna have a good life. Yeah, it's no, well listen, I, I can't fault him for doing that, but yeah. Um, would I want him at Arsenal? No. I mean, would I have wanted him five, six years ago? I would have took him. Yeah, he, he was world class, but he's he's getting, you know, he's another guy who's suffered for injuries. I'd love to know where LA ranks on his list. Was, he, was, his, <laughs> was it Wales, Gulf, Madrid? Wasn't it? Or, <laughs> yeah. I'd just love to know where. And LA. <laughs> yeah. wow. um, Goulbrand says, uh, Robbie and James, um, given, we, given we get top four decision this season, which one superstar player that might be a tad unrealistic. Do you want an Arsenal in 23-24? Well, I have a bit of Mbappe, but... That is a tad? <laughs> um, I would Ooh. look at, I guess, Gnabry, but we've been saying this summer that he could be realistic. Yeah. So, um, uh, that's difficult. Uh, slightly unrealistic. Uh, I don't know. I mean, who's... I don't know. Who, who's... It's, Who does everyone want now that we just think, you know what, we're not in that race? Well, they're all gone, aren't it? Haaland. Yeah, most of them all moved on. Oh, oh I've got one. I've got one that would probably be probably a tad, a tad unrealistic would be Jude Bellingham. That's a good one. Yeah, that's Jude a really Bellingham good one. Midfield. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I remember you mentioning that on the show we did the other day. That's a yeah, really good one. I spoke one. on yeah. the show this morning about Chocomeca, um, that kid that he Villa. called Aston Villa. 
really like him. Yeah. Arsenal said to be one of the many teams, many, many teams sniffing oh. around him. And Abhishek says Declan Rice. Some people Great say Nkunku. Declan are, Rice yeah. would be my perfect player in that midfield. Yeah, Reese um, Princess, Camavinga. There's some good shouts there. It's, it, yeah. it's those young central midfielders that if Arsenal get their act together and get back in the Champions League and splash the cash, I think they, I think they would be tempted to come. Mm. But in our current yeah. state, probably not. So yeah. this guy's called Sir Habe. He says, get my name right, Rob. That's his, his handle. <laughs> he goes, how many minutes will Saka or Martinelli or Smithrow get with Rafinha in the team? Well, they have to earn their minutes. Everyone's got to earn their minutes. Yeah. Th th Competition for places. That's what I want to see at Arsenal. But they'll get I want loads. to see quality in the team. And I want to look on the bench and you see academy players mm -hmm. that never get on. That's what we saw last season. Guys like Amari Hutchinson, um, Aziz, Charlie Patino, all great players that we're going to see one day at Arsenal, but they had no chance of getting on. They were just there to fill out the bench. I want to know that a player like Rafinha can come off of that bench and change the game. Um, well, when you do that, I want to do some quick maths. Carry okay. Um, S-Man STE says, uh, I just want to take a shot at Robbie's transfer daily video cam. Please improve it. Looks like you record it from a MacBook. <laughs> take this one. Uh, what's that? Take one and use in these lives. Okay. All right. Take one and use in these lives. Well, 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 this is, yeah, this is the studio set. Um, I don't quite have this um, when I'm doing transfer daily at them hours in the morning. But thank you very much for that tip. <laughs> uh, Timberler Camp says, uh, Robbie Martinez never played left back for Ajax. So why would he for Arsenal? He can play CDM or um, centre-back. Also, where is all the money coming from at Arsenal? Three, four players. Um, well, uh, they've taken lots and lots of money off of the wage bill. Pe um, and that's why they're in this position right now. Pe people need to stop thinking, though. He never played in that position for Ajax. Therefore, why would he... You know... <laughs> The, 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 the amount players cost these days, you're not going to go through your shopping list. Aha, uh -huh, he's perfect, mm. that guy. Oh, look, he's only 12 million. Brilliant, let's bring him in. He loves the club as well. In he comes. There's, you've got to be flexible with it. With, like Tommy Asso, who played a lot of um, times in He played back. in a back three a lot. He played a centre back. Yeah. Absolutely. You've got to, and, and he probably didn't really play as much of an inverted wing back the way Arteta's used him. So, there's got to be a degree of flexibility. They've probably seen Lissandro Martinez as a quality player, maybe. I've not seen him that much, but there's rave reviews you know, about him. They probably see him as a really good player who has serious potential to be a top left back and they're willing to invest in that. And that's the point. It's not, it's not oh, this guy just played his last 60 games at left back, therefore let's bring him in. They'll be looking around the market. They'll be trying to be clever. They'll be trying to understand where they can just get that player but tweak it slightly well Thomas Partey Atletico as you always mentioned was a box-to-box -box player he was much more up and down covered mm. more of the pitch but Arteta saw his ability on the ball his ability to be press resistant and get the uh, get the ball off the defence and has been playing him as more of a holding midfielder so we need to just get away from this he's not played as much at left back therefore he's not going to play left back yep Tom Sabal says hey Robbie it was nice to meet you and troops in Charlotte the last time in the States but I have to say, adding James to AFTV has been brilliant. Oh, wow, thank uh, you. That's great. And James will be over there in the States. Um, Noah Lang says, Mr. 360. Um, jo Josie Dirt says, James Chill, KT second captain, just trains too hard. Paul Surin says, agree with Robbie. Cozola did not play uh, the CDM role, but he used to pick up passes from around um, our own box. His accurate, well-timed passing used to trigger a lot of counters. Love the show, guys. He was a great... Well, I'm just going to address that, that Josie one there. I love Kieran Tierney. We all do. Chill, man. Toys is chill. You are, well, I'm, I'm ignoring him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Josie's getting bad now. <laughs> we, don't cover me when I've got hay fever. I'm in a bad mood. Um, I love Kieran Tierney. And when fully fit and at his best, he absolutely has a place in this team. But whether it's he trains too hard or he's injury prone or he's unlucky or... I don't know, he, he takes up boxing on the weekends and hmm. you know, gets, I, I, don't, I don't care what the reason is. The point is he's not as available as he should be for Arsenal. True. It doesn't really matter what the reason is. So I hear what you're saying. If, you know, if he can stay fully fit, 
he absolutely belongs in this team. Yep. But he's got to be able to prove that. Young Gunner says an unrealistic signing would be Goretzka from Bayern or maybe Lacharo Martinez from Inter yeah, for the 2020, nice 23, 24 yeah. season. Uh, William Fournier says an alternative for Tiedemans should be Mateus Nunes um, from Sporting. Good player, 23 years old. Um, Pep Guardiola saying he's a world-class player. Best in the eight um, EPO. Who did I see linked with Matthias Nunes the other day? Or... I think Wolves. Wolves, yeah. Wolves yeah. are trying to get him, aren't they? Yeah. Um, Saram says, uh, this Martinez looks like a pit bull. That's actually his nickname, pit bull. Um, and the butcher is his other nickname. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, That's how even Torreira was regarded as. Hope he signs and lives up to the hype. EPL is levels above the rest. That is very true. And um, Babatunde says the butcher will be slicing them all season at the Emirates. Wow. Yeah, that is his nickname, the butcher. Now, tell me about Matt I think, Turner. I think he is known as a very aggressive player. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you about Matt Turner just very quickly. I said I was doing some quick maths. Um, everyone, there's a, someone, sorry, someone in the comment section made a good question, uh, raised a good point about uh, Smith Rowe, Martinelli, Saka, and the minutes they would get. But you made a really good point about. Well, A, the five subs. Now, if we assume the five subs get, how, how, how many minutes would a sub get? Roughly 30 minutes? Let's say mm. 30. It, it could be 20, it could be 10, whatever. But let's say they get about 30 minutes of football. Across 38 games, that's going to amount to 2,300 extra minutes of football that needs to be distributed. And you're going to have 900 minutes of football in the Europa League, assuming Arsenal even get to the quarterfinal. So you're talking about 3,000 extra minutes of football that needs to be accounted for in the squad. We're, there's plenty of opportunities for, for game time and you're going to want rotation and players played already too much last season so I, I'm not really worried about that side of things you're GCSE maths well I, I just quickly <laughs> did some bits and now, now I'm slightly second guessing my now I'm, oh, oh yeah times um, two subs so 30 minutes for two subs at 60 minutes times it by 38 games 2,280 so I'm lost. No, I've had a calculator. <laughs> shall, shall, shall I walk you guys through it? But no, 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 no. Okay, no. All right, fair enough. Um, by the way, and also, James, there's this role in football now that we're hearing a lot about mm. the finisher. That's the player, like, right, uh, yeah, like a bit like how this. Grealish gets used a lot for England, where yep. it's that guy that you bring on. Yep. It's, it's just another one of these terms, what they've used in football. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. this has existed for ages in football. It, many other times called a super sub and things like that. But. The yeah. finisher is this player that will come on like 25 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, has a serious impact on the game, runs at tired players, has the ability to score, put that killer pass in and that. And so, you know, there's that role as well. Listen, these, yeah. time, these players will get loads of game time. I don't, I don't, I don't really feel that, you know, it's going to affect I, them too badly I had a theory the other day it actually it, it, it came to me during the Claude Cup I don't know why um, this do you know who's really really going to benefit from this five subs thing I think it's teams that go down to ten men because if you get if you get a man sent off and you you've got to try and manage your way through the last maybe it could be a second half maybe it could be most again whatever it is and you've got those extra two subs in the bag you can replenish that team far more. I'd rather 11, mate. That's of course, yeah, obviously, yeah. I mean, look, you know, don't, don't be... But I, I remember don't Arsenal... Don't let Xhaka hear this, you know what I mean? I, yeah, that's very true. I, I saw Arsenal many times, many, many times on their knees last season because of yeah. you know, the a player getting sent off and then yeah. just trying to get through it. And Don't be putting no ideas in Xhaka's where, head. Where Saka's had to play central <laughs> midfield and yeah. you know, Xhaka's slotted at centre-back, whatever it's been, and we've just tried to get by... I think, I think those extra subs will benefit teams that go down I, to I, I like I like this one here from Arnab Roy. He says, with so many Gabriels in the team, I wonder how Ty's going to address them. Gabriel, one, two, and three. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a good point. That's a good point. Uh, I wonder how. Dom says, <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. Dom says, if we don't get Tielemans, I believe uh, Orkan Koku um, yeah, yeah. from Feyenoord will be an alternative uh, we've been linked with um, is he not more a couple of, a, of years. He's very like Vieira. Is he, I was going to say, is he more of a Smith Rowe type player? But I, mm. I'm not sure. He, he looks more of a runner to me than like a silky creator. I don't know. 
I don't um, know if he's a Telema type. I might be wrong. Adam, be wrong. your nickname for uh, Tierney, Kieran Tierney, I'm not too sure I can use that without getting cancelled on the show. Uh, he says, love the show, guys. Let's hope for a better uh, season next year. Uh, Epictetus says, uh, James Martinez is a not a left back. He only agrees to join based on um, getting a start in his preferred position like Jesus. Back free, likely two man midfield. That you've been told. Um, I don't, well, I mean, if he's got <laughs> contacts, fair enough. Yeah, you've um, got contacts, Rob. You know, no, I appreciate the opinion, <laughs> but it was presented as fact. I'm just curious who he knows. Um, I get your point. That but, might be why he joins yeah. Man United because he Paul might be. Paul says to you, agree with James. We need squad depth. Oh. Um, I do not want to see the likes of Saka and Emil Smith Rowe ending up like Wilshire and Riziki. Every squad yep. player is important. And uh, Zion uh, Young says potential starting 11 with um, new players and linked. Okay. Oh, we ain't uh, got time for that. We, we, I'll we, fly we still it. got, we got some. Huh? I'll fly through it. Ramsdale. Right. Then I think it'll be Tommy Asu White, Gabriel, and Lissandra Martinez at left back. Again, assuming linked mm -hmm. players are signed. Then I think it'll be Odegaard, Partey, Tielemann. We can't count him as a linked player. All right. Yeah. And then it'll be Rafinha on the right, Saka on the left, Jesus up front. Oh, no Martinelli. Well, okay. you know, rotation and depth and Jack will also get minutes and Smith Rowe will get minutes and Saliba, Tierney. Listen, that's not a bad squad, is it? Um, Joe, Josie Dirt says, uh, love you, James. Good addition. He says, I've got hay fever too. Thank With you, Josie. Emoji. Thank you very all much. All your hay fever we're sufferers all, out there, we feel feeling. for you. I I've never had to leave a live stream to grab a tissue. So huh? I've never had to leave a live stream. You know, um, work, yeah, and so there you go. I did, I'm not sure how you pronounce this. Uh, Dylan, Dylan E W. E yeah, Dylan E D W. E -D -W, e -D -W I think. I think. Says, do you think we need a midfielder as Odegaard will play that box to box role? Party as a DM and then Vieira as the number ten. Yeah. So do again, you think we need a midfielder? Similar question to what was asked before. Mm. I, I, I just again get specialists in that position don't oh, don't really. be trying to you know mold Odegaard into the player you want him to be rather than the player mm. which just goes against everything I say about Martinez playing yeah. left back but we made we, yeah. we made a sign in today James we Matt, have yeah Matt, so I, I keep I keep pushing this away I don't know why uh, Matt Turner has signed um, yeah. we've got our I was going to say we've got a backup goalkeeper because obviously the money we spent on Ramsdale um, you know last season you'd think and his performances were good you'd think he's still here to be number one I'm, mm -hmm. I'm absolutely convinced Matt Turner will come in and say that he's going to push him and want to be Arsenal's number one I'm sure he's got the talent to do it um, but we've still got Leno mm. so there's Leno's going to go Leno is but, but it's gone really quiet he was in advance talks with Fulham Leno's going to go listen we, the transfer window closes in September yes Fulham are hard in for him yeah um, Leno's going Listen, I agree. He will go. But it is, it's just surprised to me how quiet that has gone. But Matt Turner's in. We know that this had been all but agreed back in January. So, yeah. you know, that this has been kind of... We've been waiting for this confirmation for a while. Um, and, yeah, he says he was an Arsenal fan since he was a kid. Um, this is really bad of me. I've just forgotten who we signed him from. Um, New England Revolution. That was it. Um, so, yeah, I wish him the best of luck. And... Uh, no, I'm sure it'll be a great addition. He'll definitely play yep. Europa League games as well and cup games. Yep. Check out the welcome video from yeah. um, out at the moment with Cecil. Um, and I like, it's true what Cecil said. He's a proper Arsenal fan. He, he refused to sign that shirt when that Tottenham fan had on the yeah. shirt. Was, right, so that was a good start. A yeah. good start. But Matt Turner... He said yeah, it was, it was just, disgusting, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's very highly rated. They rate him very highly. Yeah, he could yeah. be the, uh, the goalkeeper who starts for the US I'm at calling, the World Cup. I'm calling Benny here. Does he start over Stefan in goal? No, nope, he's better than Stefan. I remember Stefan in that um, that cup final for uh, City, yeah. man. Jeez. Although I have seen Stefan before that and I thought he looked decent. But, yeah, um, I actually think he's generally Benny, okay. Benny, need to hear from you, man. Does he start? <laughs> Love Benny. Or any other um, expert out there on we'll, we'll uh, American, American football, do you think he starts? But he's very highly rated over there in the States. So Bluey says, uh, Stefan starts, but it's close. Okay. Um, mm. No, and Stefan will get a move this summer to start somewhere before the World Cup, says Tyler. Okay. Um, but then AFC Cape Town said, yes, Stefan lost his place to him. Um, okay, so it sounds to me like Stefan was the number one, but mm. with Turner's performances, Stefan's kind of lack of game time, there's 
it's kind of come a bit closer. Okay. Maybe. And Benny said, I need you all closer to New York for a meet up. That plane ticket to Florida is expensive. I ain't got that cronky money, he says. <laughs> um, yeah, does the squad the have the bottle to win this year, says Zian Young? We're to win, win what? I mean, the title? I think we're miles off If that. we get these players in, what do you, what's your expectations? If we get, all right, let's just say okay. we get Rafinha. We've got Jesus already. Um, Tielemans. No, I'll leave, yeah, Tielemans. Vieira. Yeah. Lissandra Martinez. What would your big expectations Sorry, be? Sorry, did you include Rafinha in that? Yeah. I think the expectations are, for me, he's got to not only get top four, but he's got to convincingly get top four. I don't mean, you know, there's going to be some good sides. You're going to be in a fight. But I, I mean, scoring goals, playing great football, looking like a serious team, not losing 13 games a season. We could have lost 13 games and got top four this year. None mm. of that. There's got to be much more consistency. We've got to be harder to beat. We've got to be more entertaining. We've got to get seven, eight, nine more points on last season. I think we need to be somewhere in the mid 70s slash late 70s. And then I think we need a real cup run. And by, by real cup run, I mean, if you don't win the Europa League, let it be because some freak thing happened like Bayern Munich dropped into the Europa League. And, you know, like, yeah, mm. n none, none of this... You know, with all due respect to Villarreal, I know they had a good Champions League run the year after, but I, I don't want to be knocked out to teams that you're thinking, come on, we should be doing more than this. Um, and it's the same with the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. I think Arteta's got away with it a little bit, the, the kind of manner of our cap, cup exits since he won the FA Cup. Mm. Um, I think he's got to address that. So I think the overall answer is be incredibly competitive, um, but he's got to seal Champions League football. OK, great. Champions League football and a trophy. Yeah, so that's harder than what I've set. Oh, I know. Yeah. Um, Graham, <laughs> Graham 49 <laughs> says, I'm more excited for the potential growth of Saka competing with Rafinha, but we will lose him if we don't tie him down, if we miss out um, next year on a Champions League. Any update think... on his contract? No update on his contract yet. Um, Saka's on 30 grand a year. 30 grand a week, sorry. A year? 30 grand a week. Imagine he being on 30 grand a year. But 30 grand a week, which is for a player of his calibre, is very, very low. And they are trying to negotiate a new contract with him. Yeah. Um, JJ says, what if Arsenal out of nowhere signs Neymar? He's available. PSG willing to sell him. I think he might be off to Chelsea. Was it Chelsea? Chelsea it apparently too? have said they're not after him. Um, I think under Abramovich, that would be the sort of signing they would have made. But this new guy looks like he's pulling in the reins on those. Yeah. Um, Stefan, uh, sorry, Nick says Stefan starts, but it's more of a political decision than talent, in my opinion. Stefan better with his feet, but mainly starts because he's a city player. I say even Stefan's over there. And Chris says, um, if Arteta gets sacked at Christmas, who would you like to see take his place um, with this squad and potential signings? Well, you're being a bit harsh, sacked by Christmas. But I'll tell you what, right, at the moment, I'm liking Vieira. Yeah, I'd want a manager who would have similar um, a similar philosophy to Arteta, and and, and Vieira, Vieira. Might, yeah, Vieira yeah. might be that guy. I mean, what he's done at Palace is mm. nothing short of definitely. It's impressive. It's definitely impressive. Mm. So yeah, he's an option. Yeah, Ash says, "Call me crazy," um, but I'm starting to think that the Cronkies will shift their focus to Arsenal after winning in the states. Well, I, I hope so. I mean, if we get these targets, you look at the money we spent last summer. You know, I, I don't think it's about shifting attention. I think there's been a fair amount of attention if we get, if we have another big summer like last year's. Mm. I think I understand everything about the discussion around the ownership and the Cronkies, but right now, all I can do is judge them on how much they're backing the manager right now in this mm. current moment. And they seem to be, and it looks like they're going to continue to. So if the focus isn't there for me right now. Let's see if, let's see what business we get done. Okay, um, Football Live says, can I get a high I'm watching from Africa? Um, hi, big up, All right? And uh, let me do one more. Uh, you know, I know we've reached right at the end of the show today. It's absolutely flying, yeah, flown, by, flown past. AFC uh, protagonist says, "Smash the like button, people." Telemans and Martinez are crucial, as well as a target man um, in the box for low blocks. Uh, does Arsenal have um, a low-range um, boot at the moment? 
don't really have a target man even with Jesus he's not really a target I do think man. that's a worry you know yeah. what, what have Klopp and Pep seen the two best managers in the world two of the best ever what have they seen that they've gone and signed two really tall strikers who are physical good in the air in Nunez and, and Haaland they moved away from their kind of false nine mm. typical philosophy are we only just catching up with what they've been doing the last four years and now they've moved on to something else you know they they set trends, those guys. So I, I don't want us to be going next season thinking, oh well, we played good football, but you know we. Yeah, I, I'd still like to see. I'd still down. like to see a plan B. Yeah. Um, Disco Champ says, sign anyone you want. You've still got Arteta. You bad mind, <laughs> right? And uh, Chris says, says, the signing of Vieira and Rafinha is Saka and Martinelli insurance. If they don't resign, they'll, they'll resign. Don't worry. Um, big up Charmer Boys FC. Did you have any other? Uh, to make the for the end of the show? Well, just to quickly touch in on Gabriel Jesus, it looks like the medical is going to get done in the coming days and we should have an announcement soon. So um, the fact that that broke over the weekend, very exciting. Um, and, you know, 45 minutes is a good fee. I know people will point to that one year left and all that, but just don't stress about Supply that. Supply and demand. Think about the player we're getting. You know, he's a, he's, he's a really good player, can play across mm. the front three. Um, he's been fantastic for City. And, you know, we need to stop saying... You know, well, uh, well, he didn't start for City or whatever. Look, uh, Guardiola turned to him in the Champions League semi-final, turned to him in the games against um, against Liverpool. He trusted him in the big, big moments. So what do we say about Arsenal and this football club? We want players who don't bottle it in the big moments. Big players scored against Madrid, scored against Liverpool, got another assist at Anfield for Phil Foden. You know, he's, he's a big player. And I think it's exciting. So hopefully we get that done soon. Okay, and last one here. Brian Haynes says, just wanted to say amazing content. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you Brian. And thank everybody who's been tuned in today. Over 8,000 of you right throughout the chat. We really, really appreciate that. We will be back tomorrow. I'm um, back yeah. in the morning with Transfer Daily. Um, in the evening, we've got another new show, right? So make sure you check that out right throughout the week. Any transfers at all that drop, we will keep you up to date and we'll be all over it first there. So if you want to get a notification, on any transfer news, make sure you subscribe right now to AFTV. And tonight, if you're not doing anything and you love your your tennis, um, I suggest you get over to DR Sports where my man here, James, is going to be on with a beautiful Pippa. Um, both of them are going to be talking Wimbledon. Wimbledon, which, of course, has uh, started this week. Uh, he's a real expert on it he's not a bad no. tennis player either I'll tell you uh, I was watching him last week I he, don't think I'm a good tennis player I'm definitely not an expert but I can no, definitely he's a decent tennis player man. why are you uh, talking yourself down I was uh, impressed thank, thank you yeah Alex yeah. was good as well actually um, yeah we're, we're, we're okay yeah he was alright man he was okay. all right. well, better than me but that ain't hard but um, <laughs> yeah no so go, go and check them out on DR Sports for their tennis show tonight um, but listen thank you very much for watching once again I'll see you back in the morning for Transfer Daily and have yourself a great evening